and gentlemen. Um, patients are concerned about hospital infections. Uh, I'm concerned about hospital infections, that's my job. Hopefully by the end of my short presentation, uh, you will find uh, commercial opportunities to be interested in hospital infections as well. First of all, the business plan for the burden of healthcare infections. Well, nearly 9-10% of patients who go into hospitals get a healthcare infection. Uh, maybe up to 5,000 deaths, maybe more. Um, these figures are uh, from about 10 years ago, not really up to date, so no one really knows the number of deaths these days. At least £1 billion pounds per annum, again, this is an old figure, and I can only imagine it's increased rather than decreased, and much of this cost is preventable. Most infections caused by antibiotic-sensitive bacteria, I'm sure you've heard a lot about MRSA and other bacteria, but most of these, there are still a small number of hospital infections. Lots more causes than uh, MRSA. Types of infections, uh, first of all, urinary tract infections, pneumonia, surgical wound infections, a whole range of things, diarrhea, uh, with clostridium difficile, that, that increased a lot. Uh, but there's, there's a wide range of, of infections around which uh, you can be interested in. We're winning some of the battles. These are the MRSA bloodstream infection figures for the last uh, five years or so. And you can see that in about 2005, the infections really started tailing off. The last few months, they seem to be leveling out a bit, so you know, the market hasn't disappeared yet. Clostridium difficile came and hit us very hard in about 2005, 2006. This is a very severe diarrhea. It kills about 20% of patients who get it, so it's not insignificant. Uh, quite a malignant condition, really. Uh, but again, some, some, some uh, success in beating it. But healthcare associated infections aren't just MRSA and they're not just Clostridium difficile. This mess of a chart, deliberately messy really, is to demonstrate to you there's lots of other causes of infections in hospitals. These are just a, a number of common bloodstream infections in, in our local hospital in Leicester. They call the escape organisms, uh, quite a cute acronym really, it stands for a number of different bacteria. And really they're the, lion, the lion's share of uh, healthcare associated bloodstream infections. And the yellow line actually at the top is not MRSA, but MSSA. It's the sensitive form of Staph aureus. And you can see that's always been number one. MRSA, in fact, has disappeared. It started in second place at the beginning of the decade, and in Leicester now it's in sixth place. And other bacteria have come up and taken its place. Uh, my interest in, at the moment is in Klebsiella pneumoniae, and that's increased by 300% over the last decade. So why do patients get infections in hospitals? Uh, really, this, this chart tells it all. Most infections are from the patient's own skin and gut bacteria. And clearly that's a challenge. But uh, some infections are transferred from other patients either directly or indirectly through healthcare workers. And then there's also the environment, which is a reservoir of bacteria and other organisms for infection. And you can see at the bottom the medical devices, healthcare equipment. And that may be something that you're interested in. There's a high number, a wide range of healthcare equipment and medical devices, ranging from implantable devices like heart valves, pacemakers, prosthetic joints. I'd be very surprised if there aren't a few people in the audience here who don't have one of these devices in. Uh, intravascular cannulas, we give drugs into the vein uh, and take blood samples through bits of plastic that goes into the bloodstream. And really this is a super highway for bacteria to get from the skin into the bloodstream. Uh, a real challenge for us. Urinary catheters, another way of bypassing the patient's immune system and protective mechanisms, and the list goes on. Uh, other things like blood pressure cuffs, not so dramatic, but they're a good way of transferring skin bacteria from patient to patient. And then we've got things, big bits of equipment like beds, chairs, toilets, and commodes. And this picture here is what happens when things go wrong. This is a commode photographed uh, in, in a report by the Healthcare Commission. Uh, looking at investigating positive and difficile in Maidstone and Tunbridge Wells. And you might just be able to work out, make out some brown stains at the bottom of this commode. And this is really evidence of the previous occupant. <coughs> Clearly, that may well go to the next patient who uses it. And if that, uh, if that evidence of the previous occupant contains positive and difficile, you may well pass that infection on to the next person who uses it. So we have problems really in cleaning equipment. Uh, we use, reuse a lot of equipment, and if it's going to be reused, then it can take bacteria or viruses or pathogens from the patient to another patient. So we need to have uh, ways of, of reducing that risk. 
a couple of years ago, the, uh, the Department of Health commissioned uh, a number of designers in association with the Design Council to come up with new alternatives to things like uh, uh, patient chairs, um, patient bedside lockers, porters, wheelchairs, and so forth. And uh, there's some wonderful de uh, designs come out, and a number of them are now potentially coming to the market. But there's a very, there's a large amount of other things to do yet. So you know the the market isn't isn't complete yet. There's many more opportunities. So here's a, an infection control design wish list. First of all, we really like medical devices which shrug off contamination, but we don't have to clean them at all. They stay clean no matter what you throw at them. If we can't get that, at least we'd have something which cleans itself uh, and sterilizes itself. And there are some materials around which offer that potential, uh, but as so, as so far we're really at the early stages of, of development here. And if it can't clean itself, well, at least if we can clean it quickly, that's the that's be next best thing. So bits of well-designed equipment which doesn't have nukes and crannies in it, which hide bacteria, beautiful, nice, smooth surfaces without any corners to prevent any bacteria hiding. Uh, really, it's, 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 it's an important design uh, consideration. We clean most of our medical devices by washing them, and it might surprise you to find out that a number of medical devices can't actually be washed. Uh, and that's a big problem. We get people spending perhaps up to several thousand pounds on a nice new bit of kit. Um, we say to them, well, okay, that's great, now how are you going to clean it? And they turn to the manufacturer's instructions, and really the manufacturer's instructions are not compatible with medical usage. Uh, it's, it's incredible in my mind, but it's, it happens time and time again. So if we, if we do not have to clean it, then at least being able to put it into water or some other chemical disinfectant is a good start. Some of its equipment really needs high level decontamination or sterilization. And for the most intensive purposes, that means putting them into a high pressure autoclave, high temperatures, 121 degrees, several atmospheres, and that kills virtually all bacterial viruses, uh, prions maybe as well. Lots of challenges there. Lots of devices just won't stand that. We use a lot of devices like endoscopes, which go into the people's lungs or into their bowels. And if you try to put those in an autoclave, well, you can put them into an autoclave, but what you get out looks like spaghetti. And it's no use anymore, and that's 20,000 pounds down the drain. And an alternative then is to use high quality single use medical devices. A few years ago, uh, instruments uh, for tonsillectomies were, it was decided that these were uh, a risk factor for uh, transmission of uh, new, new variant CJD. And so uh, a number of instruments were introduced for single use instruments for surgical procedures, tonsillectomies that weren't, being, weren't to be recycled. The problem with those devices is that in fact they were poor quality and they caused complications such as post-operative bleeding and led to more deaths as a consequence than would have been prevented uh, by reducing CJD. So an own goal there really and, and something we've learned a lot about. Just a quick mention of, of some potential materials that may be useful. Uh, some interesting stuff recently, a paper from the journal Hospital Infection uh, a couple of months back looking at the role of copper in preventing infections. Now, copper is a natural antimicrobial agent, and you can make devices such as toilet seats, uh, taps, uh, door plate handles, and these were investigated in, in Birmingham and compared to standard fittings. They were swabbed uh, during in use and showed a very remarkable reduction in contamination. What we don't have at the moment is evidence that this translates into reduced infection risk. So it stands, it's, it's sounds reasonable to think that they might, but if we're going to spend money on them, we really do need better convincing. This is what we're doing at the moment, this is kind of steam cleaning, and it's very disruptive. We have to empty a ward out, close it down for two weeks, remove everything that's not nailed down, and then send in the cleaners uh, using steam cleaning devices and try finish it off with hydrogen peroxide vapor. And uh, if we could avoid doing that, it would be a big advance. So some challenges then really to you. First of all, medical devices and healthcare equipment are going to play an increasing part in the delivery of healthcare in the future. I think that's undoubted. The problem is that these new devices will offer new opportunities for microorganisms. We heard earlier on about sustainability. That's something we're not worried at all about in infection control. We, bacteria will look after sustainability by themselves. We're actually in the opposite market of 
reducing sustainability. So the challenge to you then is to design